Hi, my friend. It's Pat Sloan here for my fireside chat. Monday night, this is a little longer chat for Crazy Quilty March. <laughs> so I asked in my newsletter the other day how you liked Crazy Quilty March, and it seems you like it. It's a challenge every day to do something in your quilting, something easy and fun. And so I always in the fireside chat, that's our video for today, which runs in the evening. And I did put a note out in the different places earlier for those of you who want to just work on it all day long. Can't do two videos in one day. It's just what killed me. Um, also, I am changing things up this week. I need, I need your help. So I need to make things a little bit easier so that I can do these videos more frequently, but it takes me a lot of time to load them to all the different places. So I decided for this week, I'm going to try loading only the video to YouTube and then on Facebook and Instagram, uh, I will link over to YouTube. It will be embedded in my blog as well, uh, but everybody has access to YouTube. YouTube is free. Uh, somebody mentioned one day on my Facebook group, YouTube, you had to pay for it. You do not have to pay for it. So if for some reason you're clicking something that asks for money, back out and go again or email me, pat and I will try to help you. But um, no, it's free. So anyways, I'm going to do this. If you would just help me and come over here to YouTube and click the subscription button and the little bell so you get a notice. But that way, uh, it'll make it easier for me, saves me time. I don't have to be spending so much time loading and repeating myself all over all these different places. I'm just going to link you here, 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 here. <laughs> so I'm excited about this because if it frees up some time for me, that means I can do more of these because I'm really enjoying it, especially when I just do one that's like 10 minutes and, you know, versus uh, our Monday night ones, uh, which was a longer sit and chat. Um, so crazy quilty March. This is the calendar. So at the bottom there, I've been making notes and I just decided uh, today is binding, by the way. I will get to it in a minute. But what I decided to do was take the scrappy planner and document what I do in March. Imagine that. Put it on the calendar. So here's what I did. Of course, I made a mistake there on the one page, but here's what I did. So I went back and I wrote in what each of the things were. And from here forward, I'm going to give it a little bit more uh, detail because I think it'll be really fun to look back and see exactly what we did in March. You are accomplishing so much. Just think every single day you're, you're doing something that is fun uh, or helpful or um, enjoy, you know, like as a learning experience for your quilting. So this will be fun. So if you like this type of format, I'll link you up to this. Uh, this one, um, a lot of people have asked me to show you again, is just for the projects. So you take each project. And so if you wanted to keep track of just the projects you worked on, you could use this one for Crazy Quilty March. Each, you know, you can make a list of what they are and then document what you do on the projects. All kinds of options. So binding. What about binding? We could talk about different things, but I decided that I wanted to talk about scrappy bindings and leftover pieces of binding. And what do we do with all of that stuff? Uh, because over the years, I go back and forth, you know, seriously, I will keep binding and then I won't keep it. You know, like the, the short pieces that get left over uh, when you, you know, you might have a piece this long, or you might, it might be longer, or it might actually be this long. I know some of you can't throw this away, but you could sew them up. If you had a bunch of little ones like this, that makes super cute, scrappy binding. So I looked around because right now with finishing up the book, I'm at the point where I have several quilts that need to have binding. And I thought, okay, that's perfect. This is to have a plan for leftover binding. So that is our challenge today. I need you to think about yourself and your work habits and the style of quilts that you make because it may not be workable for you to have a scrappy binding. But I think there's two kinds of scrappy binding. <clears throat> One would be, so like I went through and I had actually kept these. I have this adorable little binding baby where you wrap, there you go. Woo. You would, you know, you could take this uh, in the slot to hold the bottom and then just, uh, whoops. You could just wrap, you know, you wrap the binding around 
and she makes like a little dress she's wearing. Uh, and then there's a hole that you can put this on your spindle, on your machine, and you know, spin it off while you're working or on a side spindle. But they're super cute. And I had this, I have this stuff and this all wrapped on there. Honestly, I, it, she must have been, she was about this big. <laughs> I had so much binding on there. <laughs> so I pulled all this off and I thought they were just in strips. So what I decided to do is sew, here you can see I didn't even trim it yet, would be to sew the black and orange. And yes, I will tell you about my binding because it's single binding, but let me finish this part first. So I decided that I really, in a scrappy binding, don't want black, oranges, and blues together because the probability of me having a quilt that that looks good on is slim. <laughs> slim, 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 that I would want all those colors all together on one quilt's binding. Okay, the other thing to think about here is look how long the black is and look how long the orange is. The orange is pretty short, but the black is pretty big. So if I'm going around a quilt, think about this, I might have one whole side of just black binding and then a good portion of another side with orange. I think if I want to do scrappy binding, I need some smaller chunks. Like maybe take this black into thirds and then take the orange into two parts. And then I'll have black, orange, black, orange, you know, like that. And when I'm working on my other projects, I know there's some green binding coming up and there's going to be some fall color, like there might be some brown. And those would work perfectly with this. So I can chop them up. They won't go, um, those are all for the book, but they won't go on the book uh, quilts because um, they'll be a little bit more coordinated. But I will keep them because if I'm doing traffic jams, like on the back wall there, I'm thinking after I do this one, I'm going to do one where all of the, uh, the two and a half inch squares are super scrappy. So I can go through my bins and sort of just mix up the colors a bit more. And then I might do one that's maybe more fall, fall oriented and this would be perfect for that. Now the other group I had wound on the bobbin baby. How many, they're, they're still sewn together too. I had two strips the same of this um, uh, sort of like lattice work and then the stripe. And so, the, but they're all blue. And I think the blue works, all works pretty well. So if I do more blue binding right now, I would just add on to all of this and I will have lots of blue binding, but I might still chop it up. I might chop it up. There's actually, oh, there's actually two stripes. Did you notice that? Look, see, there's two different stripes. So I might chop each of those in half and then repeat around so that they uh, go along. When you have the binding on your quilt, it'll be chopped up more. So this is my uh, challenge that for your binding, look at the scraps that you have, decide, would you rather do things in sort of like color families or how they might look good together on a quilt and then separate them and start sewing them together and keep them uh, wrapped up. Now I could uh, take these, whoops, let me just get you. So I use a little wonder clips. I think I have a bag uh, over with the quilts that all need binding, like the 800 quilts that need binding. <laughs> I think I have a bag over there that's got some binding in it. So I have to go hunt that up after this. So if I, a lot of times I will just take and wrap the binding like this and then eventually use the wonder clip to clip it. So it's just a loop like that, you know, all, all done up. And then this will go in a zip block. So that is how I'm probably going to handle, handle these. I might just keep one of them on, on her. Maybe one I think I'm going to use soon so I can put it up on my shelf because it's so cute to look at. Uh, but I know like right now I have all of this because I'm doing red binding. And so this is actually at the machine for me to sew together and make it. All right, so let me tell you how I, um, have how I have my binding because not everybody does it like this. So let's come down here. What I have is uh, I cut a one and a half inch strip. So you can see it on the red here. Actually, the red has, yeah, let's do the red. So here's a one and a half inch strip and that is how wide I cut it because it is single binding. It is not doubled over. 
so there's a there it is there's a blue one which is folded so basically I'm then go along and press one side a uh, fourth inch in you know I eyeball it I'm not measuring it you know exactly and this is the whole binding then and then I would attach this to the quilt and this would come over and that would be the the fold edge here would be what is I pull to the front and do my binding on the front so that is the front edge and then this is the back is sewn to the into the seam of the quilt so that is what I do why do I do this let's just talk about it <laughs> so binding has um, there's no right or wrong way to do your binding there are different ways and you decide what works for you for the quilt that you're making so way back when I first learned to quilt apparently somebody showed me single binding that's what I call it I think that's what most people call it single binding versus double you know single double binding you are folding it in half and then sewing that to the machine you know the fold I mean the unfolded the, the raw edges and then the folded edge you know would be what you would stitch down and that's super nice but along along the way somebody told me about single binding where uh, it uses a little bit less fabric uh, and it is still durable but probably not as durable for a quilt that you wash a lot so by a lot I mean like think about the baby quilt or the kid quilt that's going to go in the wash all the time that would be better to have double binding and on the bias because when you have bias the the part that uh, breaks or, or um, wears out that's the word <laughs> breaks breaks your binding the part that wears out on your binding is the actual fold line so that fold line gets a lot of friction and rubbing and you know it's going to not that fold and I'm sorry not that fold is when you come over it's the fold on the edge of your quilt the very edge of your quilt that fold I should have brought a quilt up here but that that is here I'll do it with a block so this here I'm going to take it down here because I have a little bit more control so if this binding if this was a quilt and this binding was on here I would sew it on the back of the block okay pretend that's a quilt like sew it to the back and then I pull things to the front so I would pull it up and pull it to the front and then I would I would stitch this down this outer edge is what gets the most use this uh, really um, you know it's it has the little bit of batting it has the three layers under it but that is what gets the most um, friction and will wear off so if you have a single if you have straight of grain there's a thread that runs right along there and when this wears that thread breaks and then your binding opens up like this and you will have that wear that wear mark all along that edge uh, I don't know if you have had a quilt do that uh, but I have one of the quilts that my mother-in-law uh, gave me or gave Greg and I which was his grandma's quilt uh, that was the case that line that thread right along that outer edge where it gets the most wear and tear broke and just because it was straight a grain it that thread ran right along the outer edge and it broke and the binding came open like this so Madge hand stitched down the whole thing we could have put a new binding on that's what we could have done now if you're using bias there is no thread across the th there's threads like this the whole way along that outer edge you know because your fabric's on bias so if one of those breaks you just get a little bit of a of a you know a bad spot on the binding you don't get the whole binding falling open and that's why people do bias binding because it is the most durable now if you're making a wall hanging you're making maybe a decorative table runner for a holiday that you're not going to wash a ton uh, you know maybe a decorative pillow that you're actually putting binding on the outside uh, you're doing a wall hanging that's a bigger wall hanging but really is not intended to be washed all the time anything that you're not going to wash a lot you can do the single binding uh, which is a little less thickness when you're working so it's a little easier to miter the corners uh, and it takes a little bit less fabric so it's also good for those times when you get down to doing the binding and that perfect piece of fabric you don't have hardly any left <laughs> that's 
Do you ever have that happen? You're like, I have to squeeze the binding out. One and a half inch. This is what I cut, one and a half inch. You could even do it like an eighth of an inch less and it would, it would work out fine. So that is sort of the philosophy of my, my philosophy on binding. <laughs> and I do most of my quilts with single binding just because it works for me, you know? And uh, if you've never tried it, uh, try it. See if you like it. See if it handles easier for you. Uh, some people feel it does. I do my bindings on the machine, so I do feel like getting it folded over is a, was one less layer of fabric to deal with. And so I think that that worked out pretty good. Okay, we had some blocks this past week. This is, dun -dun -dun, this is the children's um, games, childhood games, and the game was sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I love how everybody's showing their blocks and they're going, sorry, <laughs> it just cracks me up when I see it. So I love these colors. Did you, if you're using the same fabrics as me, did you love working with this plaid? Oh my gosh. This is Amy Smart, my friend Amy Smart of Diary of a Quilter. This is her fabric line. And I don't know, I'm thinking this particular block, I would love to do this with scrappy aqua scrappy greens and all plaid and just it just I, it feels summery you know i love i love these fabrics and that's that's the part i'm enjoying about the collection of fabrics i got for the childhood games this year it is very it is it is quite varied uh it is like the crayon box so i'm not doing a controlled color palette it's more like a, you know the crayola box and I'm loving it because it is going to be a happy quilt. It is not, some of you are doing beautiful coordinated bundles that are gonna be stunning. Mine's gonna be a little bit more playful and I'm really enjoying that because each block is sort of like its own little jewel box. Um, and this was, I love doing this one. The other block that we did that if I didn't talk about it yet um, is from Out West. So here is here is a block from Out West, and I think, I'm hoping some of you are becoming to love triangles, because <laughs> you certainly can't create a block that looks like this without a triangle. It just isn't possible to get that impact uh, and visual without using triangles. So yay, yay for triangles. <laughs> okay, let me, one of the challenges we had was UFO Friday for Crazy Quilty March. And you, my, I, I showed, I showed, let me get it, I'll get one of them out. I showed my um, star that day. You know, I need to, I wanted to see like, how many do I have of these? And, you know, is it enough to finish a quilt? But I started thinking, you know what? I knew this traffic jam here was much, much closer to a point where I want to get it finished. So let me scroll up here and you can see, see how I've got all the blocks in it. That is, you know, I'm not, I don't think I will put another row. I think I could put another row. The, the hindering or not the hindering, the uh, sticking point of what I can do with this one is the navy polka dot. I only have so much, it's a very old fabric. It would be very hard to find more of it. And I decided I was not going to look for more. Uh, so I'm thinking I can uh, put, I can do it this size and then put three rows of uh, white squares around, you know, for the pattern. So what I started doing is sewing two patches and then sewing the two patches into four patches and then I will take, I don't have another two patch sitting there, but I will then take another two patch and make a two by six. So this is what I will do. I will get two by six units and just get a bunch of those and I'll be able to, then, I, then it's more easy to handle. I just can't, my, I, I don't like to have my head wrapped around saying, oh, I need to count this many. I just will start making them until I have a pretty good stack. And this feels, I think I counted, I need for the top like 12, um, four patches. And then it'll be two by six, um, maybe two by fours after that. I'll be, I mean, two by three. I'll put two more up here. So it'll be two by, by three to go around. Uh, 
I will also, if you're wondering, need to adjust my math just a little bit because I made skinnier sashing and it's finished one inch. So I will have one and a half finished um, borders on the sides and one inch I will repeat on the top and bottom because of keeping the numbers even. So I can't have an odd number because um, these are, two, you know, I can't have where I go all the way across and then I need, just need a one inch square to finish. That won't be too good. I also um, have a little bit, enough of that polka dot where I might do four corner stones in the, in the outer corner. So like at the top, when I do the sashing, I might do a corner stone on each one. So that's sort of my plan for that. We'll see how, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> It'll, it'll go. I think it'll be great. I really like it. What I like to do is hang it on the other side here where I do my other video taping on the other side of this uh, koala table of mine. Uh, I think it'll be, I'm trying to get it to that size so it fits that uh, space. So I think it'll be, it'll be pretty good. I think it'll work. So I have this stack of four patches and then right by my sewing machine I have this whole stack of two and a half inch squares and I do have probably oh four times more of these in a bin over in the the uh, unit back there so I'm trying to get variety do you ever do that when you're doing this you know I don't want to have everything bland so what I'm doing is I'm taking like the first two off the top and then if the third one like I'm taking here, I'll do that. Come down here. So what I'm doing is I've, I've got this stack. So I'm taking this one and I'm just going to sew it to this one. I'm not thinking too hard about this, but the next one's a polka dot. So what I do is I'm putting that to the bottom. So I'm just sort of rotating them through. Then I'm taking this one and this one and sew those together. And I am not trying to make them all pretty pretty because I've done enough of these now that it just starts to get too much. And oft, sometimes though I will say, oh, okay, I would really rather have it more solid. So I might do these two together. But what I'll do is if there's a repeat of the print, I'll put it on the bottom. Like when I get to this one, there's a couple of those. So I will do one and then put the other ones down on the bottom. So I just sort of rotate. And as I get kind of bored with them, because honestly it gets pretty boring, particularly these don't have a lot of pattern. Um, then I'll go in my bin and see if I can find some uh, more variety. <laughs> so I'll like root through the stack going, oh, there's some I haven't sewn with lately. So I can get, get a little bit of variety. This group over here, I had like this little hedgehogs. And so there's like four blocks with the hedgehogs in it. Because like, okay, I used that up. I could have spread them around maybe, but that's not what happened. So that is how I'm handling the traffic jam. Oh, I wanted to show you what I want to show you. I am working on the, the shamrock and okay, let me show you that. So the shamrock, which is called feeling lucky, you have to buy the kit and the kits were almost gone. Um, so I'm going to finish it up anyway. I do have a little shamrock. There's a six inch shamrock block that, um, Jane Davidson did for our splendid sampler on the splendid sampler website. Uh, and I'm, you know, on the same. So if you go look around, you can find shamrock blocks, but here's the layout. So what I'm doing is I'm to the point where I don't have good table space here. Okay, so I'm at the point where I have to lay out and do the units and get them going. So I have a few of the shamrocks finished, like here's the four leaf clover. And then here's the one with the, the stem. So you can see those on here. So some of them have stems. And um, a lot of times you'll find this is a patchwork piece, so like this will be two patchwork pieces with a, a strip inside. But I love that they did this pattern as applique because I can go ahead and I'll be able to applique this down. And then what I do is I will use the Roxanne's glue. And this is, uh, I like this size. It comes in a couple of different sizes, but this particular size has a nice, uh, hole in the top there that is easy to work with. This particular one is almost empty. Can you see it's clear? It's like almost empty, but I will basically 
when I get ready, I will take the glue, these will be sewn together, okay, so pretend, but I will take the glue and draw the line where I want it to be, and then I will take this and lay it down right on top of the glue line, and it'll, once I have this, and then I'll press it, so I will take it down on the glue line, and then I'll take the iron and press it. Now, what do I do with this end? Because it's not getting tucked in any seam. See, I put this in the seam when I sewed it. So what I would do here is I would cut off this um, portion. Here, I'll show you. So I would cut off, I'll get a little closer. There, this is the end of, you know, the salvage end. So I would just cut that off. And I would find, I would measure where I'm going to be. But I will take this and just, I will fold it over. Do you see? I would fold it over, but I am going to fold it over and I'm going to glue it. So let's see if I can get this. Of course, I picked up one that the glue, that I'm almost done. I'm like super frugal sometimes. I'm like, I can get more glue out of that. So here I put a little bit of glue and I will just fold this over, tuck all that in and let it be and let it dry. And then when I applique this, I will do it on the machine. You can do it by hand too, but I'll, I'll zip it along on the machine. And then I will just be blanket stitching, you know, right, right around the corner like that. So that'll be how the end looks. Now you can make it pointy if you want it, but I just find it easier just to fold it over so I don't have so much stuff to mess with. So that's what I do with the Roxanne's glue and how I would applique those down. And I think I'll be able to make St. Patrick's Day for this one. Yeah, I'm not 100% because I have to focus. I have to focus on the book. Uh, so the book is the priority because I have a deadline. If I don't meet the deadline, then the book has to shift for publication. So, I mean, it's a hard deadline. So, but I'm, I'm doing good. I'm doing good on that. What else do I have in here? Some cross stitch stuff came in that I thought I'd show you. So if you are a cross stitcher, oh, let me, uh, these are new, 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 new. I just am so excited. This is a cross stitch key or a little guide and being a new cross stitcher, I am thrilled because I didn't know how you counted cloth and, you know, having the measuring and all these different things all on one card. Um, this is super cool. I just think this is great. So I am getting my, where is it? Err, I'm, I'm getting the, the uh, stitching done for the charity. Okay, it's not in there. Put that over there, I must have put it in here. So I'm getting the stitching done for the charity. I showed you these cool bags uh, on the fireside chat, I mean on the um, Crazy Quilty March. Okay, so here's the charity. So long. So I've got the bath. They've got the basket. Whoops! I'm over here. Got the basket started, and I I will be. I'm leaving this out uh, so that I can just stitch on it a little bit at a time. But also that means I, I did not work on the, the other March one. But I think <laughs> I just uh, it just didn't happen. So I I will move forward to another month. But I'm also thinking maybe I should just do one of these cute little, there's these new stitch cards and there's a brand new one. So there's now four of them. Look how cute they are. This is, see that little chick? I was like, could I get that chick done? Maybe even just the middle, not with the lacy part around the outside. And then here's one with the fruits and the, 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 little, the little tractor. I have a friend that would love to try. This is a winter one. That's super cute. And then just came, just came, was this one. This is the newest one with the bee and the beehive. I could do the little bee. See, if I did just the inside maybe and did like just a little ornament to hang on the door, something, something, because I'm failing at the bigger ones. <laughs> I, think after, I think after the book is done that I'll be able to get to them easier. The other thing that came in, uh, was this super cute houses uh, called the Prim Village. And I will link up to all this stuff. This actually comes with the little lobster claw charm. Let me put him up. That little house, isn't that so, it's like stinking cute. That is so darling. It only comes in the pattern. 
Uh, but the pattern is just the pattern, so that's, you don't have to, you know, you can use your own cloth and your own threads, but there's also some kits of that if you want. I'll link you to them. But the little charm comes with this, which I think is so, so cute. I don't know. I'm just hooked on those charms now. So I'm going to put that one on the bag. because so I think it's nice. I like, you know, like to be able to pull the bag handle. It just, I like having a big thing to pull along. I just think it's great. The other stuff that came in was this finishing tape, which I'm, I need to actually finish a cross stitch so I can try the finishing tape. Imagine that. But this is uh, acid-free, uh, double-sided, so that you can put it over like a piece of batting and then put it over some cloth or, I mean, some cardboard or however you want to uh, handle it. And I've got these cute little white frames I can put them in. So those are the, the new cross-stitch things. I just thought they were, they were neat. I'm just, I'm really excited to do cross-stitch. I mean, I love it. It's relaxing, but it's just a little distracting right now for me to work on things that are not, you know, the focus of what I'm doing. <gasps> so remember, we're going to talk, we're going to talk about the goodie bag. I have a goodie bag. <gasps> Somebody gets the one from last week and I have one for this week. But before that, before the goodie bag, please uh, subscribe. If you're here watching, please subscribe. And this week I'm experimenting. We'll see if it works. It'll stay this way. Uh, I will run this video just on YouTube and link it over here from every place else. It's just one click It's you know, to get over here and it will help me. You'll help me if you do that because it's really time consuming for me to post it everywhere and then come and answer questions about it everywhere. If we have it in one place, it'll, it'll be fabulous. So we'll see how it works. I'm hoping that you're okay with that. Okay, so last week's, um, this goes, oh wait, no, I'm going to show you this week's first. Should I show you this week? No, I'll show you this one. <laughs> okay, so this one goes out, last week's prize, which also has the little stitch book in it. Um, this goes out to Peggy Mellers. So Peggy, I will also email you, but Pe last week's question was, what do you want to learn about? Or what do you want to know more about or get better at? You know, something along those lines. So I love that Peggy was super specific. I just thought this was fabulous. Not just like, I want to learn to machine quilt. No, Peggy was like, she is working on hand applique. And what she really wants to do is be able to refine and get better at doing small, turning small hand applique items. And that is a skill. It takes practice. Um, so Peggy, if you've not been doing a lot of it, the more that you do, you will all of a sudden one day like this, you'll get it because that's what happened with me. When I was doing a lot of hand applique, all of a sudden one day I could turn all kinds of small stuff, but I was doing lots of hand applique like every single day. And it's just a skill building thing. All of a sudden your hands, eye motion all just clicks in and it's more, it's comfortable and you get it. All right. So. I have, and see, because it's Crazy Quilty March, oh, by the way, I forgot to say earlier, if you, I'll link this uh, down below and also at my website, but Baby Lock is running a giveaway that I have sent a goodie box and Eleanor Burns has sent a goodie box and they are giving, a, so they're giving away both of our goodie boxes and a Crescendo sewing machine. Uh, there are, you know, there are restrictions, so do go read that. But, you know, for the most part, uh, you know, you can go over there and get all the details. But it's by Baby Lock. Baby Lock is running all of that. And so I will link you so you can go over and enter to win a Crescendo sewing machine, which is fabulous. It has the laser and everything else. It is a fabulous machine. Okay. So for Crazy Quilty March, and today is binding, so I think that... Um, I think, what should we ask? What should we ask? Okay, while I'm mulling that over, I will show you. <laughs> because I didn't write a question down, so I had to make it up. <laughs> Let's be honest. Okay, so. <laughs> so I have, uh, have the journal, the quilt journal, which these are so cool. And so you, this goes in this one. And we have... 
some Orifil thread, of course, and my Ulfa cutter and the super cute little Ulfa pin. Then I have a bunch of buttons. I think everybody needs to have buttons, so I'm going to start adding buttons into these goodie bags. So here's a whole group of super cute little buttons. These are all hand dyed, which is, they're just so gorgeous. And the fabric, another bundle of sort of quilty fabric. Here's a yardstick kind of fabric. And this one has like labels. I just love it. There's our, I think they're supposed to be like the pin heads. And then pin cushions. Look how cute that is on black. So all of this is a goodie bag that will go to someone who answers the question. Ah, what is one of the things we did earlier? I have to, I have to get an inspired question. Um, ah, let's just do this. How many have you, have you been following Crazy Quilty March since the first day? And have you been uh, able to do something every single day so far? Today is, I have to look, today's the ninth. And so have you been able, from the first to the ninth, been able to follow along and do something. If you haven't, you can still enter. You can just say, uh, no, I haven't been able to, but I'm going to go back and catch up, or I've been out of town, or I just found out about it. So that is it. Tell me what your status is of following along. And you're going to do that at my website. Okay. So uh, over there, you can, you can uh, leave a comment. So I love you for Crazy Quilting March. Uh, next week, next Saturday, is uh, this coming Saturday is quilt day. So I will do a couple of live on Facebook and I might try live on YouTube as well on that day. I'm not sure what I'm going to do or how it's going to work, but if you subscribe, you will know all about it because you'll get an alarm if you click that bell and you should. <laughs> so I'm Pat Sloan. I will see you online. I love you everybody. Talk to you later.